All right, last but not least, for uh, Chapter 8, we are going to be talking about the VSEPR model. Um, VSEPR is an acronym. Sorry, that's a P. Wish they had an erase key on this. Um, for valence, uh, electron, Well, that'll help if I spell this right. V S E P. Sorry. So valence shell, electron pair repulsion. Basically, it's a big fancy name to say that electrons do not want to be close to each other. They want to move away from each other. So if I have something like um, B E C L two, I would draw my B E. It's got two valence. I would put my C Ls in there. And I drew it this way on purpose because if I drew it, so I'm gonna, I'm, and I'm gonna ignore the lone pairs for right now just so that I can save a little bit of time for this video. But um, if I draw it like this, I have 180 degrees between my electrons there. They're as far away as they can get. If I draw it like this, I only have 90 degrees. And so there's gonna be a lot of repulsion which is gonna push this back over this way or this, this way so that they get back to this 180 degrees. So many times I have two or three atoms um, in a whole molecule, it will be linear. If I have four, like BH3, when I draw that one out, this is what we have been drawing. It is not right because here I have 90 degrees, here I have 180 degrees, so they are not equal. Everything wants to equalize as well as it can. So what boron is actually going to look like is like this, where everything has 120 degrees separation. And this would be called trigonal planar. Okay, this also works if I have something like, whoops, this molecule, formaldehyde, would still be 120 degree angle, it'd still be trigonal planar. Um, it would not work for something like this, NH3, because with NH3 I have a lone pair, and that lone pair is going to push on these electrons and try to keep them away. This configuration isn't going to work either. It is actually going to look like this, where this hydrogen, whoops, sorry, this should be a lone pair. Where this hydrogen is going to be pushing out towards me, this one is going to be going back into the screen, this one is going to be flat towards me, and this lone pair is also going to be flat towards me. Each of these is going to be 109.5 degrees, um, so, and this would be a tetrahedral arrange arrangement. After that, we have, if it has five bonds to it, we are going to have one going up, one going down, one in the plane, one out of the plane towards us, and one back into it, and we are going to call this trigonal bipyramidal. These are going to have a 120 degree separation, these are going to have a 90 degree separation. And last, we have if it has six, we have one up going, one straight up, one straight down, two coming out towards me, and two going back in to the page. And all of these, the Fs will have their lone pairs. I'm just, again, trying to save time. We call this octahedral. And everything has a 90 degree angle. Okay, if we start getting lone pairs in there, so for my tetrahedral, if it has one lone pair, we call that trigonal pyramidal. If it has two lone pairs, we call that bent. For my trigonal 
bipyramidal. If I have one lone pair, that is a seesaw shape. Two lone pairs is a T structure. And make sure that you uh, look at these. These are all written out in your book. Um, three lone pairs and get the idea of what it looks like in your head is linear. For my octahedral, one lone pair is square pyramidal. Two lone pairs is square planar. Three lone pairs is a T structure. And four lone pairs is linear. All right, I uh, hope that helps, and that's the end of chapter eight.